but because the mortgage really does not have a value dollar to it, we don't sell it, we assign it. I sell you the IOU and then assign the mortgage. We've talked about an assignment before, remember? Have we? No, we haven't. An assignment is a contract, visual joke here, so watch. An assignment is the contract stays the same, but the people change. Your, your mortgage was with Fifth Third, it's now with PNC. They can't change the contract. It's still 5.33% for 30 years, pay on the first. But we've assigned it from one lender to another lender. That is called an assignment. Obviously, I forgot that is part of the contracts chapter that we're going to do on Monday. Cameron? So how does the the bank who originally owned the mortgage on the house make money selling it to a different lender? Like, where's the profit in that? Okay. So I showed you. Let's go back over here and let me help. Let's do this. In that original thing, I told you, Cameron, I'm going to loan you 100000 mm -hmm. at 5.33% interest. You are going to make me payments of $553 a month for 30 years. And when you get done paying me back after 30 years, you are going to make, I am going to make $200,000. Mm -hmm. Right? Are you with me so far? Yeah. So now let me ask a question. Sarah, would you buy a $200,000 note if I sold it to you for $150,000? Say yes. That makes this example go really good. Yes. Yes. So she just gave me $150,000. I got a hundred grand from Jed Clampett. So I turn around and give Clampett back his money and I made money on that deal. And now Sarah has the payments and this is Shauna's mortgage. So Shauna now starts making her payments to the bank of Sarah instead of the bank of Raymond because I sold Sarah the note and I assigned the mortgage that <laughs> So it really only makes sense if the bank had owned that proper, well, that, that mortgage for a period of time to make the interest off them and then sell it again to make the profit from Sarah, right? Most lenders will hold a, a note a year or two to make some interest, but they really need their money back. All right. I borrowed Clampett's money. You were, now we're actually into chapter 13. I borrowed Clampett's money, a billion dollars, as a bank. I've now loaned it out to Sarah and Christina and Gunjan and Shauna and Cameron and Jaman and Aaron and Ross. I'm out of money. I've loaned it all out. How do I get it back? Simple. I take all of your notes that you have signed to me and I put them in a pool and I sell that asset to some other investor who then gives me back $1.2 billion. I turn around and give Clampett back his billion dollars plus the interest he wanted, and I made some money. And then I borrow the billion back from Clampett again, and I go back out and I do it again. Now I loan money to Sarah's sister, Christina's sister, Lashana's sister, your sister. Take all of those, package them up into a pool, sell them again, and I get the money back. I turn around, give Clampett his billion dollars, keep the difference, and then I do it again. That's called financial services. That's what these banks do. That's how they make their money. It is not their money they're loaning out.
the Teachers Credit Union of Texas promised the banking system $10 billion over the next five years because they get, they're a union and everybody pays their union dues every day. All right. So that's where I might hold that loan and collect, collect your first payment, second payment or whatever. But eventually I want to get back into the game and clamp it's out of money. So I sell them and we call that the secondary market. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mae, Freddie Mac, sorry. Brian May is a guitar player for Queen. Never mind. Um, but that's how that process goes. That is tomorrow when we talk about the primary market and the secondary market. But for now, understand that I'm selling the note to you, but I'm assigning the mortgage so that the mortgage can go with the note. And like I said, I'm out of my visual aids. I actually have a note and a mortgage that I put together so that you both, so that the new investor now has both of them. They have the IOU and they have the collateral that goes with it. Okay, now, further on page 216, how many in here are the older brother or sister? How many are the younger brother or sister? All right, the, what? Sarah raised her hand twice. You're in the middle? Oh, you've got an older brother. Okay, I get it. Confuse me. If you're the oldest, you have done this to your brothers and sisters before. If you're the youngest, they did it to you, all right? I still do this to my brother all the time. 51 years old still falls for it. You ever had something in your hand and say, you know, if you give me that, I'll give you this. And then when they give it to you, they take both and run away. Yeah, that's happened to you if you're the youngest. If you're the oldest, like I said, my brother still falls for it, he's 51. I'm like, hey, give me that. Yeah. Ah, there is a clause in the mortgage that says a bank cannot do that. They cannot keep a lien on your property and take all of your money as repayment and keep them both. It is called the defeasance clause. When you make your payments to the bank, they have to, under federal law, give you that release of the lien. They cannot keep the lien on your property and keep your money both. They must send you a release or the reconveyance deed if you're working in that other title theory platform. So the re I mean the defeasance clause says when you make all of your payments, the bank must release your lien. Okay. Now there's also some clauses in your mortgage if you have tax reserves down on the bottom of 216. There's a clause that says they get to create an escrow account for your homeowner's insurance. On the top of 217, there's a clause if you have flood insurance, there's a clause that says that they will create an account for you with flood insurance. Now, there's a, the next thing on 217, I can buy your house subject to the loan that you have in place. You guys might think of this as, I'll take over your house payments for you. I'm going to buy the house from you subject to the lien you already have in place. How can I do that? How can you transfer your interest to me and keep the lien on it? Think back to the deeds that we transferred. Uh, quick, uh, not quit deed, <laughs> not quick. A quit claim, right? Well, yeah. You could quit claim me your house 
which transfers your interest, whatever it is. Well, in this particular case, your interest is the loan that you have with Fifth Third, and now I'll start making the payments to Fifth Third for you. That is called buying subject to the loan that's in place. But here's the problem. If I fail to make the payment, who are they coming after? You still, because the bank thinks it's still you on the note. So even with a quick claim, I'm still on the note? Well, certainly I didn't sign it. You, you, you're the one that signed it. Remember, the note is separate from the mortgage. The note is an IOU that you signed. Okay. This, this is a conversation that you will have with your clients that are getting divorced. One of them will say, well, I wanna quit claim my interest to my spouse so I can get off the, the note and the mortgage. No, it doesn't. That's a whole separate document. Your quit claim transfers your interest to me. Your interest happens to be that note, I'm still paying it, I will make the payments for you, but you are still on it as far as the bank knows. So if I miss a payment, who are they coming after? You, because the bank still sees you on the note. I so bought it. Go ahead. I was gonna say, so it's kind of like a rental property where it's under your name, but if like the tenant misses a payment, it still goes on you type deal? When we get to the lease section, it is very similar to that, yes. You can sublet a property, which is very similar to this, where the tenant gets another tenant, and if tenant two makes fails to make a payment, the landlord goes after tenant one. Yeah. Very good, Cameron. It's a very good analogy, only it's dealing with leasing, and we'll talk about that in another chapter. Here, it's the same concept. I bought the house subject to your name or your loan and your mortgage being in place. When I miss a payment, they're coming after you. Okay. Now, 